it would be probably useful for me to, to, to kind of go through this thing because I'm still trying to discover what happened. I, I feel uh, still a little lost and bewildered and I don't quite get it. And, and that's, a, that's a common thing for me in my life is that I, like somebody, like some things, I mean, just politically, like I can't get how people don't see that that politician's a liar. You know what I mean? I don't get it. And so for me, if I was going to write something, the concept of the title would be how I got into Scientology and why I got out. As a little kid, I'm talking about even before I could talk, I can remember being interested in people, really interested in people. And uh, I was pretty shiny and everybody wanted to, you know, pick him up and all this crap and I didn't like that. And, uh, but, and I could see people. I, could, I felt like I could, I understood who somebody was pretty well as a little guy and, and, and I didn't have any kind of, I might have had some judgment on it, but I didn't have a condemnation like, oh, I just thought, okay, that's dad, not just daddy, but oh, okay, that's that guy and that's Uncle Gino and uh, this is this guy at the party as a three, four-year-old kid looking around. And at a certain point, I think, certainly before first grade, I became very, very interested in who am I? Not just, you know, oh, that's that guy I know, but I, was, I had some kind of a perception about a person. And so, I, and as a little kid, I remember, because the way I could get how I perceived the people in front of me, whether it was accurate or not, it was, I believed it was true was kind of by looking into their eyes and, and saying who they are. And so I remember as a little kid looking in the mirror, looking in the mirror, not, and like really not looking at how do I look, looking and trying to say, who am I? And I, I would say, who are you? Who are you? You know, as a five, six-year-old kid, I remember, eight, eight years old was pretty intense. And, uh, and I never got it. And I just thought, well, I guess that's the life condition that, you, you know, it's, it's, it's too hard to, to self-perceive. So this was a question that, that was always, you know, and then I went up and, and as I was growing up and I played the fool and did normal stupid things and drugs and whatever. But uh, it was always something that was in the back of my mind and I was always on a spiritual journey one way or another, you know, either some new age shit, not, never like... Not a lot of organized religion by the time I was 14 or something. I'd kind of lost interest in that, you know, but I would read a lot and even to the point where as a 21-year-old kid, I mean, I remember I was into this spiritual teaching of this one guy who was originally teaching in French and I, I, I learned French just so I could read it in the original French. You know, so it was important to me, but it was all based on who am I? And it kind of, I guess, that Greek know thyself type of philosophy. So, somehow I got into Scientology, which was um, Bodie Elfman uh, was in my acting class. And my acting teacher, who's a big uh, disseminator, Milton Kitsellis, was uh, ranting about some shit, and he was, and it, which was pissing me off because it was wasting class. It was like nobody... Ah, uh, you guys are auditioning me or something. He was pissed off and he wanted more un, unmitigated just adoration and he wasn't feeling like he was getting it. And, uh, and in the middle of his tirade, I was sitting there like first thinking, who are these fucking people that are not, you know, flowing the correct amount of attention to the master? And then I, then I, and I looked and I said, I wonder if I am. And I said, do I trust Milton? And I said, you know what, I really don't. And that was kind of like a weird thing. I said, well, I don't. And I thought, uh, do I, who do I trust? I said, well, at least my parents. No, I don't trust them. <laughs> and I was looking, I didn't trust anybody in the room. And then I had this realization is I don't trust myself. And so in Scientologies, I found my, my ruin. I found my own ruin. And uh, for some reason, because I thought, oh, well, let me try and trust somebody. Let me try and trust Milton, which is what he was yelling and crying about in this whole big speech. And I thought, well, I knew he was a Scientologist. So I said, Bodhi, I said, give me some book on Scientology. 
I was doing a scene with him. And, oh, yeah, and he was this nervous little kid at the time. And uh, so he gave me this big fat book called What is Scientology? A lot of pictures. <coughs> and so I took this book <coughs> and I read it. I read it. I think I stayed up mostly of the night and I read the thing. I mean, you know, I don't know if I got it word for it. I didn't clear all my MUs for sure. But I got through the thing. And, <laughs> and, uh, and I thought, okay, if that's true, fuck, I'll, I'll go clear. I'll try that. That sounds fine. So I, call, I gave Bodie the book back the next day. I said, <laughs> take me to that big castle thing. I want to I wanna, I wanna check this shit out. So he's always very excited, you know. He brings me in, and uh, everybody's all excited, and they've greased the path because, you know, I've been on TV and shit. And uh, everybody's really nice. And I, I figured I want to do this pure of thing because I'd done drugs, and I could feel them in my body. And I read the thing, what the pure of supposed to do. I said, you know, I always... I felt I had felt at that point like I hadn't done drugs for 10, 15 years, and I thought that was one of the biggest mistakes I'd made in my life. And I thought if this can really take that effect away, because I felt that it lost, I had lost some of the shine that I'd had by, you know, I, I mean, I wasn't a drug addict, but I was a drug indulger, and uh, so I go there basically planning on doing the Purif but they've got to give this tour, and I must have gotten there at 10 in the morning, and I swear to God, I'm starting to go nuts. I've done tests. I'm on the cans with some lady. I'm like, fuck me, can I just buy this course and let's get going, you know? And then they do this, uh, you know, thing, and they, can, they give me uh, my personality test, and I was all on the top of the thing, and they're still telling me that I'm fucked up. And, and I'm like, look, and, and they want me to do this. Finally, they go through it. I mean, I must have been there eight hours. I'm ready to pull my hair out. And they say, uh, uh, you should do uh, some little course called Ups and Downs. I said, look, I'll do the course. If I can, can I just do the pure thing? Yes, yes, yes. And you have to do the TRs and objectives first. Uh, or with it. What's that? That's this course that kind of, I said, fine, just let's go. So I buy the course. I say, well, you know, I've been here. It's now it's like 8.30 at night. And I say, can I start? Cause, and I had to get a little oral surgery. So let me do something. I came here for some Scientology. All I got was all this, everybody's selling it to me. I never got to do any. Right, because I wanted to try the shit, and uh, and uh, so now it's 8:30, and I say, okay, uh, you know, they say, well, you can start your TRs course. You'll do the TRs, you do the the, um, and the TRs are these communication drills. Then you do the purif where you clear all the drugs out, and then you do the auditing, which is called objectives, which is like this stuff where you walk across the room and touch the wall and all this kind of shit. And supposed to, the, the end phenomenon is firmly rooted in present time. I said, that doesn't sound bad. I'll do it. Okay, if you can deliver that. Cool. So, uh, so I said, well, give me some Scientology, for Christ's sakes. I've been here since, what, nine hours or something, getting nothing. So they say, okay, you can start your uh, TRs course. So they, I go in and I do this thing called an M7, which is basically Bodhi and the supervisor are kind of helping me clear the words through. And I, the first thing I ever did in Scientology was read Keeping Scientology Working, which is a pretty heavy uh, uh, bulletin. Yeah, explain what that bulletin says. Well, it's that uh, basically is that Scientology, it's a, well, it's, it's a very interesting bulletin. At first, it's, it's, it's updated. So you're reading the updates. I think it was written in 1965, and it was updated in 70 and 75. And those updates are before you read the actual bulletin. And the updates are like L. Ron Hubbard just going bananas. This thing is true. It was true in 1965. It'll be true forever. If you just follow this, Scientology will never fail, and it will take over the universe, and will save all mankind, and we're the only hope for the world. So just if you apply this one policy, everything will be fine. Now, in the bulk of the fucking policy is stuff of, you know, it's, it's pretty heavy, you know, that if you're in Scientology an inch, you're in an ounce. I mean, uh, you're in for the rest of your, you know, this is the billion-year contract shit. This is the heavy Scientology. We are the only hope for mankind, and whether you get it or not, it's the truth, and we're not here to, to placate you. We're here to try and save the planet, and we're only, they're the only hope for mankind, and so this is no game. So that was the first thing I got. I said, okay, you know, we'll see. I couldn't say, you know, I believe that, but uh, 
it was an interesting, bold claim that made me say, okay, all the more. Is this shit really that good? Let's go. So here I am. I bought my little TRs and objectives and my Purif. And, uh, and I said to the supervisor, because now by the time I finished that, it was 11 o'clock at night. And I'm like, uh, okay, well, when do we start? You know, she said, when can you come in to start the course to finish up? I said, you know, let's start tomorrow. I, I said, I can be here 7 in the morning. I said, well, we don't start till, till 9. I said, you know, I've come here to do something. I've been here all day. You guys say you got a product, you want it, you know? So she came in at 8 o'clock for me. So I came in, and I just started. And I read all my shit in there, and it uh, and, uh, sounded good. And the first exercise is a thing called OT TR0, which is basically where you sit three feet apart from somebody. You cannot have any, any thinking mechanism. And you close your eyes, and you're totally relaxed, but there's another person three feet in front of you doing the exact same thing. And the exercise is to be in communication with that person and your environment. But fully, the key word is confronting, which is he defines as facing without flinching. So without thinking anything, like if I'm, think, I'm doing it with you, I'm thinking, okay, Mark, he's got that beard and he's probably hiding by. Then I'm flunking because I'm thinking instead of just being there. Without any thinking. And so I have to be able to be... And you do this, it says, until you get a major stable win. Okay? So I say, fuck it, okay, here's my first Scientology ships. And I'm there with some whoever. And I'm sitting there, and I'm facing him without flinching. And I had a major, major stable win. What I did, according to Scientologists, and I don't have any other nomenclature for it, so it would work for me, but I went exterior. So in other words, uh, the concept would be your Thetan, you, your soul, whatever you want to call it. That's who you are. You're not the body. I'm not Jason Begay. Jason Begay, it's like, it's like buying a new car. I'm the driver of the car, okay? So basically, I went exterior, and to get back to the beginning of my story, I felt, for the first fucking time, the biggest win in my life. I knew who I was. That question that I'd been asking since I was cognizant. Who am I? I knew who I was. And this was huge for me. I said, wow. And this is not even that fucking auditing stuff they talk about. This is just some fucking, you know, some thing. Yeah. And I said, shit, that's awesome. So I was blown out of my socks, happy. Like, I, and I, I, I mean, I was like, oh, so that's who I am. You know, because I knew I wasn't this thing, because I sometimes would have this personality. Sometimes I was a phony. Sometimes I was, you know, you never know if you're real or not. You know, but then there's those moments when, so it's like, who are you? You know, and I could see, I could create effects on people and stuff. This is all this growing up. I mean, it was really interesting. Why would this person like me? You know, I knew why I liked them, but why did they like me? Well, you said back in class that you didn't trust yourself. Why didn't you trust yourself? I didn't know who I was. So I go down and I say, okay, I want to buy this clear thing. I'm going to do that because that's enough for me. I just go right there. No reg ever had to reg me. As a matter of fact, I used to reg the regs. They would fucking run because I, I'd do things to them, you know, and stuff like that. I'd fuck with them. I like doing that. But at any rate, so I go to the reg, I say, I want to do this thing. And I figure it's going to be like, you know, between five and ten grand. You know, because the Purif thing was a, like 1100 Friggin' clear thing, it's going to be more. But I figured, what the fuck? I had a couple of bucks saved. And I said, what? Well, I buy the fucking, they, they tell me the price of the thing. And that's another thing. You know, the way they, they just can't say, you know, you know, oh, yeah, the clear, it's 1150 you know, it's like they, 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 they just have to. They're not used to somebody just coming in and saying, let me get that thing. So that was hours and hours and hours. And, of course, Bodhi, you know, it's like he's in there with me and he's my FSM. And at that point, you know, he's going to get 10% and he's excited because, you know, he was broke at the time. And uh, at any rate, it was like 50 grand. So within three weeks, uh, no, within three days. And I probably had 60 grand in my name at that point. I plopped down 50. I said, let's go. 
That's a huge commitment. Well, and so that, that's everybody fell in love with me, and David Miscavige called me, and all the everybody, they start, you know, you know, he wrote me a letter and all this shit. And, you know, everybody's got all this excitement about me. And then the, the other thing was that part of the reason it cost 50 grand also was because they said, uh, you, you know, training. I said, what's fucking training? And they said, you mean, I can't, do, I just thought you sat there, you held those cans, I'd done it in the interview, it sounded easy. I say, uh, and if it's going to be that great, and I remember reading what clear is and all that sounds pretty fucking good. And all I'd done is sat there and I knew who I was. That's all I'd ever, which probably the biggest win I had in Scientology was on that first day. At any rate, so I go, uh, uh, I go to, uh, they, they, they sell the, the training. I said, what's that? Well, you learn to be an auditor. I said, listen, you know, I'm an actor. I'm not an auditor. You know, that's cool. You know, blah, 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 blah. And they're trying to get me to do this thing and buy a fucking e-meter. And I, you know, 3,000 what for that fucking thing? It looks like a fucking transistor radio. And, uh, but I'm like, oh, man, okay. But I trust them. I figure, you know, because they're delivering a thing. These are good people. You know what I mean? And, the, and I'm also looking at these people, and it's these decent people. They're decent, and I'm trusting. So, and they are. And, uh, and so they sell me the train. They tell me, finally, the only reason I bought the train, they said, it's half the wins. Oh, so you, in order to get the, you, the wins of the auditing and really going clear, you have to be trained. I said, well, then give me the training package. So I bought a class five training package because they said you had to be trained as, as trained as you're clear and I said what's a clear guy so a class five now you should know that a lot of people fall for this sales thing and there is probably I would guess my guess as conservatively is there is probably 500 million dollars is my guess off the top of my head of unused training that has been bought People buy it, but they can't confront it. They can't face it without flinching. Okay? Me, I'm a class five auditor. I fucking did it. I liked it. I thought it was cool. And I actually got a lot of wins out of that shit. So that was part of another reason why people liked me. Because I was actually doing it. I didn't mind going on. I would quit. I'd say, I don't want to go on that audition. I'm going on course. You know, I was getting, I was here to go clear. I figured I can do this in about five, six months. What the fuck? You know? Let's go. And, and I basically did that. You know, I'd stop to do a little bit of stuff to pay the rent. And, and, but basically, I was, I was in the org from 8 in the morning. I had my own auditor. And she just audited me all day. I got all the other PCs off her fucking line. And I just went clear. Well, I actually went through my grades. It turned out I was a past life clear. That's why I was so able. And... Uh, well, explain what that concept is, of <laughs> past life clear. Well, what is that? Oh, dear God. Past life clear. Well, I, in other words, you know, I was born in 1960. Scientology uh, was developed in 1952. But LRH was doing uh, Dianetics. <sighs> I'm having a moment. This is part of the moments of, of, of coming out of Scientology, for me at least. I, 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 would, I think it might be something common to a lot of people, but there are moments where you just feel a loss. And it's not a loss of, I miss Scientology by any stretch, it's a loss It's a regret of, 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 of having invested so much in something that is empty. And, uh, and so there are these moments, I, I just had one, where you just go, Whew. So at any rate, a, a, a past life clear would be somebody, because a, a clear is an, is a, it, even though LRH says absolutes are unobtainable, that's a state that he called a homo novus. You're not even a human being. You're not even a homo sapiens anymore. Homo sap, as he calls it. You're a homo novus, which would be new man in Latin. And, uh, and uh, so it's a, it's a new state on the evolutionary track. 
So I'm more evolved than regular mortal humans. I was uh, declared to have been uh, somebody who had gone clear in a past life, which would have been my last life. Even though supposedly, the, you know, the tech wasn't there for somebody to go clear. In a well, you can go clear. Well, now Dianetics was written in 1950. And uh, he was talking about the state of clear in Dianetics. It was not until they wanted that they, I, I personally believe that, you know, it's just that there's always something being re-released because it never was quite correctly done or done or understood. And all the people who went clear last lifetime, even though they may have been on OT8s, are, were uh, pulled back in because uh, in New Era Dianetics, which was a later way of going clear, uh, there, was, there was a different criteria. There were different criteria for what was a clear and getting rid of an engram, which is a whole thing. And so you had to go in and get all the postulates off. At your point, what, what, was the, what were you supposed to achieve as a clear? Well, here's the thing. I mean, this is a funny thing for me. And this is a, I mean, if you read Dianetics, I mean, the, the state of clear is somebody who is uh, never likely to get sick. Uh, he has a perfect memory. Uh, it's even intimated, and this was in 1950 when there was no, is that he could be immortal. He may never die. Uh, it, it's pretty funny. And uh, so that's what the state of clear is. Uh, they define it as no longer has his own reactive mind, which is a rigged, rigged game to get somebody to take uh, OT levels, which is their real money maker. But the uh, 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 what, what, what? Oh, so I don't know. So clear. So, but you know, like I said, I've never. There's a guy on the internet apparently who's saying, "Yeah, I'll give you a million bucks if you can demonstrate OT. I'll give a million bucks to anybody who can demonstrate clear." There's no fucking clear. There's no clear. There's no clear. You know, I mean, just looking in Dianetics, there's no clear. Clear is basically. Uh, I mean, what are you kidding me? Clear. So I was like, if I get this, that's what I was going for. It's too good to be true. And that's basically it. That's, and that goes back to that feeling of loss. Is because, you know what it is? I'm sorry to say. See, and I'm, I'm actually realizing something for myself right now, because this is, this is cathartic in, in a way for me. But it's, 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 it's the same feeling. That loss is the feeling that I got. Like, I'm no stupid guy. I grew up in New York City. And I mean, I, 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 I never got mugged. I mean, I know, and I've been through some serious bad neighborhoods. But I remember one time I was, uh, I was living on my own down in the village, and I saw this guy running across the street, and he had like a VCR. This is back when VCRs were a new thing, like a plasma TV or something. <laughs> and he's like, you know, he'd obviously stolen the thing, and he's like, you know, hey, you can have this for 50 bucks, right? And I bought it, took it home, and it was full of bricks and shit, you know, and I was fucking felt... I got conned, and that's the feeling of loss. Because I talk, it, it actually, going back, you're asking me about clear. It's a con. It's a con. And uh, like any, and, and you know, it's an interesting, th I mean, this is way segueing, but this is something I don't know if it'll be. It's interesting, is that, you know, there's a book that uh, LRH wrote called The History of Man, and he talks about a lot of these traps that can catch a thetan, which is something that has no matter in history, space, time, or location. But it can catch a thetan. But he's got interest and curiosity, right? And, uh, and, so, uh, and so there's these things called theta traps. And, so, uh, and, and the best theta traps are ones that the thetan runs on autopilot. Like if I'm trying to enslave somebody, the last thing I want to do is have to worry about fucking, you know, keeping the key and the lock and, uh, you know, the best traps, you get a guy to just keep himself in jail, right? And that's what Scientology does. You just keep yourself in jail. And that you, you know, that's it. You, it's, it's, a, it's a perfect theta trap because, you, you know, you believe it and you are investing your time and your money and so it's, you know, you can't be a fool. That's too much to confront, you know? 
when you were a kid, you were saying you were able to look at your dad or your uncle and you could really perceive them and understand them and know them. Yeah. When you looked around at the people in, in the org and, and you trusted them, do you, do you think there, there was a misperception there or uh, were you? Well, I tell you, I got to be honest, is that the more I got in, the stupider I got. That's my, as I get out, that's my perception. The less, I mean, Christ, you don't even ask questions. I mean, that's what I was trying to remember the other day that, that I was going to say that I had forgotten. Like this thing, I, I got into, they made me as commissioner of CCHR. I'm talking to Tori. Um, and, and, I, and the CCHR is? Because Citizens Commission on Human Rights is a way to try and destroy psychiatry and psychology. And I was like, fine, I don't give a shit. And uh, so, you know, they put my name on their station there, and fine, they got me out of an ethics cycle or something. So I say, okay. And, uh, but I, I would go, and I, and, I, and I always had questions, you know, because I, I, would, I would, you know, even L. Ron Hubbard, you know, he would always call the psychs, and he would rail about them and how terrible they are, and they're the sole course of destruction. But he would never, I kept saying, you know, his own technology says that's a generalization, the psychs. Who? Psychs on the whole track. That means all psychiatrists for billions of years in the history of Theta. You know, it's like it's so general, and that would be a that's a that's a, that's a, a characteristic of a suppressive person is one who speaks in generalities, and another one is somebody a, a person who has overts, which is, which are sins or crimes committed, is somebody who's uh, you know antagonistic or angry, and he seemed very antagonistic and angry about psychs. So I was thinking he must have, you know, overts on him, and he's speaking about him in generalities. But the thing about it, I was thinking about that, that I went over to CCHR and got tours ad infinitum by the, the directors, this woman, Jan Eastgate, and I would ask questions, and she'd write me up in ethics chits and shit, and I said, fine, yeah, I got the question. I don't fucking know. But I would say, if you want me to represent Scientology's viewpoint, and you go to their museum, it's all the psychs are bad, the psychs are bad, this is a bad thing, and Hitler, and they're responsible for child pornography and rape, and it's all the psychs. And I say, okay, that's their viewpoint. I say, but if I'm going to get into a discussion, you know, if you want to prepare me to be in, uh, a spokesman for this shit, I got to know the other side. So, and I kept asking, can you give me the other side? And they won't give it to you. And every time I would push it, I'd be like, honey, there's no way to get into the argument. They, they, you know, they're not, if it's all this is true, there wouldn't be anything. I got to know their viewpoint. How am I going to win the argument? You know what I mean? And they wouldn't give me the viewpoint. And, it's, it, it, and, and it was like, and then they started to write me up because I'm, I'm, I'm doubting. I'm not saying I'm doubting or nothing. I'm just waiting for the data, which is this whole big thing about learning how to think correctly is this other course called the data series. And the, basically, you have to get all the data. They won't give you any fucking data on certain things. And especially about this. There's nothing written in all the tomes of Scientology about psychiatry. Nothing other than the psychs are responsible for all your sexual problems because they implanted you as a thetan 10 years ago. And I realized that on my research of OT10. Oh, well, then it must be true because LRH says it's so. I mean, it's, 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 it's really, you see how you, at a certain point you get conned. And I would say, where's the fucking data? I'd say to everybody. And they'd show you, and th nobody's allowed to tell you anything. So they pull out a reference. They always pull out this fucking reference called pain and sex. And there's like, he's talking about pain and sex are these things that, that are really just dogging people and bothering them. And it's a, it's a really difficult thing that we're trying to help you with in Scientology. And basically, there's a, maybe two sentences in there where Ellerate says, through my research on the whole track of OT something or other, I just discovered that this is all because of Sykes. And that's the reference they tell you to prove that the fucking Hitler and rape is a thing. And I'm like, honey, that doesn't quite handle it. You know, but they don't get it. Now, I look at this as an outsider. And, and to me, and I don't have a vast knowledge of this, but it seems like the psychiatric field sprung forth in in the 1800s, or uh, not, uh, not, you know, thousands of years ago or millions of years ago. How are there psychs on the whole track? Because if uh, there see, weren't the, psychs, no. Well, because now the latest, these are the 
evil people. These are the evil beings, actually. These are the evil beings. And they've been around, they, you know, like you hear about Xenu and all that shit. Xenu was a psych. You got it? So he just he wasn't, wasn't a practicing psychiatry. psychiatrist. No, he was practicing Xenuism. You got it? Gotcha. Now they're called psychs. So you I better remember. beware. I remember one time Am I, I visited. Right? <laughs> Fuck me. One, <laughs> one time I visited the Celebrity Center um, and, and it just walked in uh, late at night and looked around and said, well, what goes on in here? Right. And they, um, they, they woke up the projectionist to show me the orientation. Oh, nice. I yeah. had my own private screening that uh -huh. night. And they had some poor Sea Org kid, maybe 15, 16 year old, years old, babysitting me in the theater. Right. Well, well, you're not allowed to watch the movie alone. Right. Well, I was. You're not allowed yeah. to do what? Because you get, get an MU. Like, he was watching to make sure you didn't have any lack of mask kind of shit. And he was making small talk before that. And he was right. saying, well, you know, uh, you remember the Salem witch trials? Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, it was the Sykes behind that. <laughs> Well, I, I don't think there were psychiatrists back then. And, and he went, oh, no, 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 not the psychs. I mean the, uh, uh, the pharmaceutical companies. Oh, dear goodness. No, not quite. See, these are the kids. You just got to, you know, you dash off a get well soon card, and, and that's about it because it's, it's sad, you know. That's, and, that's, that's, and, and, you know, this is the interesting thing. This is the, and it goes back to, uh, you know, to answer further the question of, you know, what did you perceive? You, um, what I perceived, and I, and I kind of avoided the question by saying I got stupider, but let me tell you something. These are good people. These are, these, are, these are some of the best people you can meet. These are people who really want to help. They're willing, I mean, they're willing to give up their entire life and their own personal ambition to help others. You know, that's a, that's a pretty rare... Uh, and, 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 and generally, you would say, you know, it's a, it's a pretty decent person. That, that, that's the thing. They, and, you know, and I would say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a bad person, you know. If I saw me walking around there, I'd say, okay, he's okay, you know. Uh, but when you say you got stupider, how do you think that happened? Well, what well the, in my opinion, again, and I'm, I'm only out of Scientology about a year or so, less, less than a year. Uh, officially, um, but uh, in my opinion, what I what I've gathered as I as I wake up, it, you know, it's a funny thing in Scientology. You feel as though you're waking up to the truth, the reality, or what really is. But what you're doing is waking up to the reality of Scientology, which is that not the actual the reality, which is the 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 agreed upon universe of what is. And, um, and, and basically, in my opinion, in my opinion, the, 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 the best thing you can be is yourself. And, and, and that's who you are. And that, you know, there's, there's degrees to which you can actually become yourself. And, and that's probably what the whole spiritual interest is. I, I, you know, I, for me, I don't really know. But what, what, what Scientology, the trick of it is, it, it, it makes you feel as though you're sold that you're actually becoming yourself. But what you're actually becoming is, my name is Jason Begay. I was becoming Jason Begay the Scientologist rather than just, not even Jason Begay, but me. And the trick is, and you say, how do you fall for this shit? Go back to my first fucking win. Because it's me. It's me. And, I, and so there is, there is you. But then it's you are through, I can't explain it, pressure of the group or I can't, this is the thing I'm trying to get. Because I've never been like a guy, well, I got to get a pair of those shoes because everybody's wearing them. I, I, it's not been, I've been always, oh, I gotta find my own if everybody's wearing those things. But it's like, and maybe that's how I got out to some degree is that I always try, you know, I mean, I'm not saying I never, you know, you know, bought a BMW or whatever the fuck people wanna do, you know, but it's like, it's, it, it, it to me, 
it, it gives you a way of thinking that, to, at least for me and from what I observe of others, is not native to that actual, that person. I think, as I said before, in my opinion, I suspect, I'm no Dalai Lama, but I think that the best thing you can be is yourself. And that if you can do that truthfully, it'll be beautiful and successful and, and interesting. I don't know about success, like how you define it, but it'll be a worthwhile time spent. And, uh, and, and what happens is you, you, you are sold, and you, the, again, the trap is good because you sell it to yourself. Because you, if you're not on course, you're wanting to be on course, or you should be on course. You've got your own self in jail. It's an autopilot gig. It's quite good. I think there's some hypnotism in there or something. I don't quite know, but it's quite surprising. And, uh, and, and so at the end of the thing, you end up being, you know, you know, like here's an example. You start the ethics technology. So you start thinking, okay, and you start thinking in terms of the conditions of existence that he laid out and that these are behaviors. And so you, now you're not just going, you know what the fuck, I think I need to take a walk and I think I got to become, uh, I'm going to be a, you know, an insurance salesman, and that's my truth. You know, it's, you know, you have to go through these steps and do this. It's like retarded. It's not, it's not true. It's not true. You know, and I did ethics cycles and conditions, and they, nothing changed. I've seen people who've done them, and they've changed, so I don't know, you know, whatever. You know, but there's a placebo effect. I don't quite know. Tori, how many times did you do the PTSSP course? Uh, you know, it's like on and on and on. You have to, every time you go PTS, which is the human condition, you got to do the course over and do this shit. Let me tell you something. It's, it's a, that's another racket, PTS. I'm not sure if we got PTS description PTS on camera. PTS is potential trouble source. So all injury, accident, and illness. Listen to those three words. All. All. Injury, accident, illness. Ow, oh. is all because of PTS. Everything, everything negative that happens is because of PTS, which means you are a P potential T trouble S source. Wow, that sounds weird, a potential trouble source. So in other words, not only did you just slip and, 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 and split your lip, but you better get away from this guy because if you're near him, you're gonna split your lip too and your business is gonna fail. He's a potential trouble source. So you gotta take him out. It's like he's got, you know, it's like you don't come to the school with the flu. This is what, it, this is like the spiritual flu. So it's like heavy shit. And now there's only one reason that you are a potential trouble source. One reason is that you're connected to an SP, which is a suppressive person. Now this is the two and a half percent of awful people like Tori <laughs> who are fucking it up for the rest of us, good people. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, oh, it's a funny thing. It's funny. You know, the, you know, as I zip around, my best friend, this is my best friend. I mean, like, this is a guy that I was, in ninth grade, I met this guy. And like I saw this guy, he came to my school in ninth grade, and I, said, I saw this guy, and I, and I, and I was a gregarious kind of kid, and he was new, and I saw him, and I said, you know something? You and I are gonna be friends. I think that's the first thing I ever said to him. And, uh, and I was right. And he's a big famous actor now, and uh, an amazing, guy, David Duchovny, and, uh, and uh, David, my best friend, I mean, I'm talking about a friend, uh, our relationship was adversely affected by my being in Scientology. He was very cool, you know, but he wasn't into it. He wasn't, he was happy for me. He never gave me any fucking thing about it, you know. But, uh, and I think his wife 
you know, I, per I, I, you know, I perceived that, you know, she was a little bit more like, like that. At any rate, our, uh, and they were right. But, uh, you know, and then everybody in Scientology, not everybody, so that's a generalization. I'll give you people. Uh, Marty Rathbun, uh, Susan Watson, Dave Pettit, uh, a couple of RTC terminals people said, well, he's a 1-1 he's a one, one SP, okay? In other words, trying to destroy my relationship with him, and it affected our relationship. 1-1 one, one is, a, is, 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 a, is, a, is, a, is a definition is a covertly hostile. Hey, man, I'm your friend. I really am. You fuck. You know, that's covertly hospital. Covertly hospital. And, um, and so uh, one of the first things I did, I mean, you know, we'd stay in communication, but the further I got in, like that. And that's a loss, you know, let alone my family. You know, no, but my family, you know, shit, they don't fuck with me or anything, you know, but I've never been closer now that I'm out, you know, because they weren't into it. They, 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 everybody was totally respectful of me. Nobody ever said, you know, my mother said one thing once, you know, I just don't think it, you know, allows for the grace of God or something. That was the all, something, you know, because she's a big Christian thing. Of course, I whipped out the whiz book and I gave her the right answer and handled her. You know, but the uh, uh, the thing with Dave, this is just the other thing when I was thinking about the, I was laughing is, is uh, as I, I got out, when I got out, one of the first people I went to go see was David. And, uh, you know, his whole family was out of town and, and I was just moving here and now we live in the same city. And, uh, and so I went over to his house and, uh, you know, we we're just walking around and, uh, and we talked about it a little bit, just a little bit, you know, because I just said, oh, by the way, and I said, oh, okay. So we started to talk a little bit about, like, you know, OT levels and stuff like that, you know. And, you know, he doesn't watch South Park or whatever the fuck, but, you know, he doesn't know this whole... So, uh, you know, what is that? You know, what is the, you know, what, what were you into? Why, why, what is the OT, or, you know, or so, I don't know what the EVS to quit, but somehow I went and I, explained to him and here I am you know just kind of just kind of basically it just walked out the door and and it did so much for me but I started to explain to him the story of Zeno and the loyal officers and I tell you fuck me <laughs> I mean I couldn't get a third of the way through the story and we had our faces on the floor we were laughing so hard I mean you couldn't even talk you was just because it's so it's retarded it's insane. It's what was funny. your reaction, though, when you saw the packet with the info? How did you react? Well, that's the other thing. I got to say, I mean, like I had told you earlier, I had, I had been on a spiritual journey long before Scientology. This data is, is just, it's, it's, it's as different as the word Thetan is different from the word spirit. It's about that different. I mean, the Bible talks about the devil and demons. Uh, it's nomenclature. Uh, the, you know, entities is what they talk about in these New Age religions. Uh, so this, all that stuff about Thetans, uh, I mean, it was a little because I was in Scientology heavily, so I was a little bit like this. But I thought, okay, and I, I remember that was my thought. I said, okay, well, that's obviously, it wasn't that big of a surprise to me. And I just thought, it, it's like one of those moments, now that I look back and really look at it, there was a moment where I could have woken up there. But you choose not to, and that's part of the reason why Scientology is expensive, you know. Well, if you're paying a lot of money for it, it makes it more valuable, and you give it more. It's like I was just listening to the fucking radio today. There's this guy. He was working at MTV, and they were uh, in New York. This is just on NPR today, this guy. And, uh, and he was on this art channel on NPR. And uh, he was working at MTV, and they were talking about uh, packaging and marketing. 
and how important it is. And the guy, and, and, and he was talking and saying it was important and that it was, this other guy said, it's not that important. He said, bullshit. And they had a little bit of an argument and he said, well, let me see, let me show you something. And he went and he was in New York and he went and he grabbed little garbage and he put them in little plastic boxes and he put a little stamp on them and dated them and signed the, you know, and numbered them. And he's selling them for 50 bucks each as art. Started as 10 bucks. As just a, and it was like a little gift, but now that they're up there 50 and 100 bucks each, the people are actually calling them art. So it's an interesting thing. So again, it's your own, it's, you're driving the car. It's just that you don't realize that the car as a Scientologist, because you're in the trap, it's got a pre-rigged route. It's called the bridge. And so you feel like this is this easy life. I just got to sit here and the car basically drives itself. All I got to do is show up at the church and I'll be happy. And there you are. And you're on the bridge to total freedom. To total freedom. Yeah, they free you from yourself. That's one of the brutally I'm, ironic things about Scientology when they have a slogan called Think for Yourself. Yeah. And you find yourself thinking exactly what Scientology wants you to think, it seems. No, but you're doing it yourself. That's why it's pretty good. I mean, it's really insidious. It's, it's quite, a, it's, it's so bold and bald-faced that, you know, you just would never suspect it. You know? It's another, reminds me, you remember those, I used to smoke cigarettes. And uh, so I was smoking cigarettes and I wanted to quit and I couldn't quit and I'm smoking, smoking. And then these new cigarettes came out uh, from American Spirits. And I say, and they're supposed to be all natural, right? And the fucking thing on it, it said addictive free. And I said, bullshit. So I start smoking and I'm down to like two cigarettes a day. And I'm like fucking disseminating the shit out of these things. They're the best cigarettes in the world. And I'm telling everybody, these are addictive free. I'm hardly smoking at all. I say, look, it's addictive free. It says, that's not, it says additive free. That went right back to a pack a day. So it's the same kind of, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a, uh, it's, it's a, it's, it's, you know, you're, you're, you're playing the game by yourself. It's a, it's a, it's a mental. Well, it's, I don't think it's fair to say by yourself because uh, there's, it seems like this entire structure of Scientology is built one, to, to funnel you onto the bridge and keep you on the bridge. Yes, yes, and those people, those people that I suspect, again, I'm not an expert, and this is some of the things, this is one of the things that I can't fully confront yet. I can say that in my opinion that the lion's share, at least, at least, well over 99% of your Sea Org people are the truest of the true believers, okay? So they are really there to, to they're trying to help you, and they'll, they'll not take no for an answer. It's like, you know, your son wants to touch the stove, and, you know, you're willing to physically stop him, even though he's sure that he wants to, to see that beautiful blue thing that's dancing there and touch it, right? And maybe even put his hair in it or something, you know what I mean? He doesn't know what fire is. They are willing to give their lives, practically, to keep you on the bridge. Because this is for your own good. So, um, uh, but they are doing, it, it, that's just one individual. And that individual is, is doing his job. He's, there's not a lot of them that need to be told to get up in the morning. They're on autopilot too. But the whole group is uh, it becomes, you know, this, this living, breathing thing. And the thing that I, I, I haven't quite confronted is I can't quite see what the fuck anybody gets out of it. Like, you know, is COB, does he want $300 million? Is that what it is? Does he want a billion dollars? And COB is David Miscavige. David, I mean, is that it? Is it uh, just his power hard on? Is, you know, I, or is it just insanity? You know, I mean, I wonder, is LRH, was he just crazy? You know, there are people, I mean, maybe he was an SP, you know, whatever. Oh, but I don't know. I mean, the jury's out for me. I haven't, like I said, I can't confirm. I don't see what the fucking, like, if I wanted money, I know for me, if I wanted a billion dollars or something like that, I couldn't do that. That wouldn't be a way for me to, I, you see what I'm saying? I wouldn't, I couldn't do it. I, I'd probably kill myself, you know what I mean? I just couldn't live with myself like that. I certainly couldn't look my son in the eye. 
You know what I mean? But that's me. And maybe that's me, PTS. Maybe I'm fucked up. Maybe that's my conscience, whatever the fuck that is. But do you see what I'm saying? I, I don't know. I, 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 I haven't quite had that confront of truth or evil, depending on what you want. But I don't know what the fuck anybody wants out of it. Well, what's your, what's your Whoever's, who's get, like all this money is a big thing. Where does it go? Well, we see uh, recently there was a video released of uh, Tom Cruise's birthday aboard the Free Winds, and, and I understand that there was six figures spent on the birthday party for Tom. And that's parishioners' money going to keep Tom Cruise happy. Well, they, they figure that's worth it. You know, yeah. they, you know according to him, he brings, it, he brings in just him being Tom Cruise. Per their viewpoint, he probably brings in 100000 a day for this church in terms of interest and positive public relations. And, you know, so uh, six figures ain't dick. Right. You know, uh, that, you know, I, it's certainly... You could throw a party for him every day, and it wouldn't really put a dent in their bank account. So I don't know what the, you know, a party. You know, people like to get mad at COs who take these big things, and, and Tom Cruise is party, and there was some, the, the fucking free winds is, let me tell you, is a flea bag. I mean, it's a, it's not a fucking nice boat, you know. I mean, I've been on that thing. I got seasick every time. So... Uh, but speaking of Tom Cruise, you were talking earlier about uh, your your, <laughs> your uh, identity being stripped and being replaced with that of Scientologist, and certainly you can see that in Tom Cruise and in, in well, the mean, recent videotape that was Cruise. released. I mean, I, I mean, I, yeah, but I would suspect that that's what's happened, you know. And he was off for a while, and uh, you know, he's in gung ho. You know, I'm sure he went through a big ethics cycle and woke up, you know, because he probably had some trouble with his wife and he found his ruin, you know, I think it's probably, I mean, I would just, maybe his, he has trouble with girls or something like that, you know, that might be his whatever, I don't know, anyway, he's But at, at any rate, he seems like the, you know, ideal, uh, ideal of what a Scientologist should be, I mean, dedicated. Well, I was in there, you know, COB called me the poster boy for Scientology. I was... I was as gung-ho as you could get. How did it turn around for you? Why, why did you start to uh, doubt? Well, uh, it's, it's, uh, it uh, not only didn't work anymore, the more auditing I did, which I was more and more encouraged to do, the worse I got. I was starting to go fucking crazy. And uh, it was fucking me up. How far up the bridge did you go? I'm a class 5 OT5. I've done all my L's. Done a lot of... Uh, uh, what do you call those fucking things? You know, all those other courses, data series things, and blah, blah, blah. One of the things, you know what's interesting to me? There was a big thing about maybe two years ago or a year and a half ago that everybody wanted you to listen to your congresses, which is uh, the, all the, the a congress was this, you know, meeting that LRH had starting in 19, early 60s, and he would get a group of people together and he would give a series of lectures on X. And usually it was about, it all really had to do with clearing. Because all these, the Congresses were having to do with clearing. And, uh, and I, uh, well, let me give you, remember that I'm talking about the Congresses. I'm going to give you the unabridged version. Is that okay? Sure. You sure? Yeah, fine. Okay. Um, when I was in that TRs course, um, my very first week in Scientology, now again, I'm an actor, so you know, communication is something I kind of do for a living. So, and that's a whole course about communication. So I felt like I'm pretty good at this naturally. And one of the exercises is uh, you take a, they use Alice in Wonderland, which has got full of these wild kind of uh, sentences, and you take it and you, you read it to yourself and then you deliver it as your own. That's a TR1. TR2 is properly acknowledge somebody. So they say off with your head and you say thank you to make sure they know it and end it. And there's all these other things. Now, here I was doing this TR. It was happened to be TR2. And somebody said off with your head. And I said, my God. And they flunked me. And I said, why? And they said, you know, because you're showing, uh, you know, it's supposed to be just thank you, good, 
whatever. I said, no, read the fucking thing. He says, appropriate acknowledgement. If somebody says off with your head, the, why do you think he chose Alice in Wonderland? And they bring the technical, the head technical person in the fucking place, and they're all invalidating the shit out of me, and I'm sticking to my guns. I finally am crying. I said, you guys are fucking wrong. Who the fuck talks like that? Thank you. I got it. Okay. Good. Wow. That would be way too much. Wow. Okay? I totally duplicate that. This is the way you're supposed to talk. I'm really talking to you. But do you see how I'm not? So it's there. I'm doing, this is perfect in terms of their idea. All right, I got it. Okay, so that's really, that was good TRs. It wasn't excellent. Excellent TRs is more like this. You know, you're really conversational. But I'm not moving, and I'm really looking at you, and I'm ready for everything. And I don't blink, and I'm not really, your eyes stink. Okay? So it's that kind of fucking deal. Some gum wore Sue up. Anyway, the, um, that's just a private joke. You know that one, right? Anyway, um, Mu Gu Gai Pan. These are words that are the, that just, you can talk gibberish in Scientology to help you learn your TRs. And one of the things written down is Sum Gum War Su Up. That's not a sentence, that's like written like Chinese, S U M. Anyway, so uh, at any rate, so I'm in there and I'm fucking crying and shitting and like blah, blah, blah. So finally I stop and I, and I toe the line and I'm like, thank you, okay, good, you know? And then, About four years later, in some event, uh, um, COB, David Miscavige says, hey, there's been this big breakthrough in this golden age of tech. Fucking piece of shit. They, uh, uh, they, they, and uh, one of the things is, here's the real thing. On, people have been doing the improper acknowledgement. You're supposed to have, it says, appropriate acknowledgement. And they have LRH on tape saying, you know, somebody says, off with your head. And he goes, my God, that's the right way to do it. So here I was, this guy, first day of school, and I had it right. Now, cut two. You're asking me how I got out. So I'm in the fucking thing, and they keep telling me, I got to do this action, and I got to do this, and you got to do this sec checking, and all this shit. And I'm like, you fucking people. I wouldn't show up here if I wasn't ready. And they would be sec checking, which is basically asking me for my crimes and charging me thousands. I probably paid 50 grand, excuse me, in, 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 in sec checks to get this shit together, because everything was fucked up, so it must be that I'm, I'm fucked up. And I kept saying, these sex checks are killing me. And this is the standard tech now, this is the golden age of tech. And I finally just said, you know something, motherfuckers? I don't care, you could get LRH to fly down here back from fucking Target 2 and tell me that I am fucking doing it wrong. I am not going in session and doing this shit. You guys are fucking killing me. I am here to tell you, you're fucking me up. So I'm out of here until you fucking wake up, okay? And then they come back to my house and they're offering me free auditing. I say, show me where free auditing is standard. You're not giving me standard tech, now you want to fix it by more unstandard shit? Get the fuck out of here. You ask Griffey Blythe and the whole rest of those motherfuckers at AO if this is a lie. It's the fucking truth. And I'm out. And then they call and I just went on course. Because I couldn't take any more of this fucking auditing. It was killing me. So then they come out with this thing. They, Jason, you have to see this. I wouldn't even go to events, you know? Because me, I'm at events. Everybody's like, hey, how you doing? And I go, good. I just couldn't fucking lie anymore. I'm ready to fucking die, you know? I, and I told them, I'm not going. I can't participate. Because my role was like Jason Begay. I couldn't be like, yeah, well, I'll tell you the truth. I'm fucked up. I hate OT5 and everything's going fucking shitty, and it's fucking not working, and it's costing me a shitload of money, and I'm more unhappy than I've ever been in my entire fucking life. What would happen if you spoke truthfully? Well, I would tell that truth. I would talk to RTC and all these things, but it's bad peer. It's none of anybody else's business. You're not supposed to talk about your case. So this is going on, honey, this is going on for, I was in Scientology maybe 10, 11 years, the last eight years like that, okay? And I'm paying fucking money. Maybe I paid a million fucking dollars. I don't know. I don't even keep track. I just said, what the, okay. Here, another fucking thing. This is going to work. You think so? Yeah, we finally got it. So anyway, on this fucking thing, I'm out of thing, and I'm doing course, and I'm just off auditing lines, you know? And then you've got to see this thing, Jason. It's going to fucking key you out. And I go in, and they show me this fucking, uh, uh, and I'm looking at all these people who are on OT7. And they're going nuts with the sec checks, too. And I'm like, this is fucking crazy. 
These people like, you know, they're supposed to be home auditing and then they have to go to flag every six months and they're there for like six fucking weeks. How are you supposed to, what are you, crazy? And they're coming home like, uh, uh, I had a really good six months check. I mean, these fucking, I said, I mean, it's just as clear as day. I tell you, this is not fucking standard. Scientology is not supposed to make you worse. I saw, I was experiencing it and watching it. So now they come out and this is two, three years. And this little mistake probably made the church about $500 million. And then about $500 million later, COB gives a fucking briefing on the free wins, and this is what they show me. It's arbitrary, it's canceled. It's an arbitrary, is what they say. So in other words, all this SEP checking was an arbitrary. And through his research and looking into things and rechecking all the LRH's notes, they realized they made a mistake. And so now I don't have to do the SEC check. Aren't you happy, Jason? And all these people, like on Seven, like a bunch of fucking idiots, were like, arbitraries are canceled. I can just go on, and it's going to save me about 50 grand a year and all this shit. And it's like, wow. And me, I'm like, you think that's supposed to make me fucking happy? I feel like you should have a fucking apology. I said, if I were COB and I made that mistake, I wouldn't go arbitrary canceled. I say, I made a fucking mistake. I am sorry. And I'd make up the fucking damage. I'd pay. My fucking mistake made me 500 fucking million dollars, and you don't fucking even say you're sorry? You say, guess what? And this is what the fucking thing does. It just plays the same game over and over again. And this, when I go in now to the Congresses, the Congresses, I, toward the end of this eight years, they say, the, I, and I'm like off auditing. You know, I finished, uh, you know, OT5 finally, and I just said, I don't want any more of this shit. And, they, and they, they, nobody even said take OT7, because apparently I'm in the middle of four different fucking actions, and nobody knows what to do, you know? So I'm fucking in the middle of L10, you know? I mean, I can tell you about L10 is, is a story in itself. L10 is a story. So just know that they use my fucking wins on the L's. And the L's are what fuck me up in Scientology. Okay. The, now, I do the, uh, I do the, uh, so I'm, I, I go and I say, fuck it. Okay, I'll buy these congresses. It's only a couple of thousand bucks. And I got something to do and I'll get in shape. I'll listen to a congress and go for a walk. So I was one of the first people to finish the congresses. Because I just sat, I get up and I fucking thing and I get up early. I get up at like five. And I just get up and I take the dog and I'd go and I'd listen to three tapes and walk for an hour or two and do the thing. And I, so I got through the Congresses. And me, the Congresses are part of what got me out of Scientology. Because if you listen to those fucking Congresses, it goes like this. Hi, everybody. I'm LRH. I'm very happy you're here. Listen, I've got great fucking news. We've got clear handled. And you'll do this thing and it's this new technology. And here's the realization. And this is foolproof. And this is it. And this is the, that's it. And now, welcome to 1964. Okay? Apparently, you know, because the fucking thing didn't work and Dianetics didn't work, even though nobody ever said it didn't. But they always trying to perfect clear. Then the next Congress. And there were, what, 20, 30 of these fucking Congresses? Maybe about, I don't know, 200 hours or some shit? Every fucking Congress is, I got it this, now we've got clear handled. We finally got clear. And this is going on over, I'm listening from 1964 to like 1970, and they still haven't fucking handled clear, but they're selling you clear. And I said, what the fuck? That's exactly what they're doing to me now. I said, what the fuck? And I went back there, and I'm talking to Dave Pettit, who's the head of CC, who now is handling my case personally. Personally. You know? He's at my house. He's at my fucking thing. We're taking walks. I almost killed him once. <clears throat> I fucking took him by the tie and I was grounding him. But the, <laughs> I fucking, you know, Jason, please don't. Me. Oh, God. Okay. I actually re secretly recorded it. It's funny. I have it on, on, on audio. Tape. But uh, the, uh, oh, fucking thing. Because he didn't want me to leave. Please don't leave. Please don't leave. I said, motherfucker, get out of the way or I will fucking kill you. And he wouldn't get out of the way. So I took him by the tie and put him down on the floor and then I walked out. But because uh, it'll get you pissed. But uh, that's how mad I was. I mean, I was fucked up. It's one thing to feel unhappy from, I mean, I walked into Scientology. Remember, I was on the top of the thing. It must have been false, though. I mean, I was fucking happy. And I'm fucking unhappy. And they're paying me. They're making me pay to get fucked up. 
And they're, and they're telling me what's wrong with me. And that's another fucking thing. They won't tell you what the next thing is. And I'm like, you, you, believe me, it's good. So you got to fucking buy the thing for 50 Gs a pop or whatever. And it's wrong. Oops, made a mistake. We're going to do this now. I mean, you're fucking, are you fucking crazy? Do you see how stupid I was? Yeah, I mean, it's like, oh, my God. And that's the game. And I'm telling you, that's the game. So at any rate, the congresses helped me out because I said, what the fuck? It's a... Because I, I never met LRH, and I figured he was good. I figured Scientology works. It's just these fucking mortals can't fucking give me Scientology. If Scientology works 100% of the time, this ain't fucking working, so I'm not getting Scientology. And that's what I said to him. I said, that's why I said you guys should give me the fucking money. It's one thing to make a fucking mistake. But, you know, let's say the last fucking 600 grand was a fucking mistake. I mean, there, I feel like I got a case because if Scientology works and they agree this didn't work, I bought Scientology, then you should give me my fucking money back. And there's nothing to indicate that they have any fucking hope for my case now. So I just said, you know, babies, let's just, and I, for try, I mean, it took me, I was trying to be nice. I mean, six, eight months, I say, why don't we just let me go? Just let me go. Just let me go. You know, I think it's better. You don't want to get into a whole fucking thing with me. And they would. And they had to keep changing terminals. Because I was, I mean, I'm talking about big fucking terminals because I would put doubt in their universe, because you can't argue with my story. When you saw what happened to fucking me, and you're a trained auditor, and you look in my fucking folder, they fucked me up. You, I mean, I mean I'm talking about insane. I, I mean, I'm mean, like, I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I've never been like that in my life. I walked out, I was like, hey, hi. I was never shy, I was never introverted or anything. I'm sitting there like, I'm fucked up now, you know what I mean? And so, I mean, they fucked me the fuck up. Oh, you well, the way out's the way through. I mean, there's no reason to get in that room. Maybe that was the, the hidden, deep shit. I'm looking at my kid. He's five years old. He's a happy fucking guy. He's not fucked up yet. He might get fucked up later. Are you sure you were fucked up? Maybe you were just PTS to an SP. Well, that's what I'm saying. And that's the other thing. I had this big fucking car accident. In the middle of OT5, I nearly died. I was in a coma for three and a half weeks. I mean, I was fucking, like, everybody thought I was going to die. So, of course, we got to find my PTS terminal. That happened eight and a half years ago, okay? And I got out of Scientology a year. In the last seven and a half years in Scientology, still no fucking PTS item until I finally said, it's you guys. And they couldn't deny it. I said, look at the data. Are you sure it's not that person? He's gay. I mean, I, that, that, that's what somebody told me. I mean, that's how naive some of these people. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a uh, what do you call it? An RTC terminal, which is like the, 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 the gold standard of technical perfection. And that they think, that's a, gay, a, gold, a, a homosexual. So they believe that homosexuals are all 1.1. They still believe that. There's some that do. I never believed that. I read. I interpreted it differently. But it was something where I had to do some mental gymnastics.